Hi everyone, this is Christina and Carmen, and this is another episode of A Spooky Tells, the podcast for all things a spooky, sometimes true crime, sometimes they mix in a little bit. Today is depressing, I'm sorry. This episode needs a trigger warning for uh, child abuse and murder. Oh. Yes, yes, I'm uh, talking about a cult, Carmen. Mm-hmm. A cult that maybe you haven't heard of. It's in Brazil. It's the Superior Universal Alignment Cult. I don't think I have. I thought maybe you were going to tell me about the lady who was a pastor also. And then she had a bunch of orphans that she claimed were her children. And it was kind of like a cult. Oh, is that in Brazil? Yeah. Oh, well, let's... Add that on for a future topic. <laughs> I know a little bit about her, but no, no, this is a, I guess, another cult in Brazil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But before we get into that, uh, I have a listener story for you. Yay. And listeners, if you want to send in your stories for us to read on the podcast, you can email us at gmail.com. You can DM us on any of our socials. You can call the Spooky Hotline. The number is in the show notes. It's the only phone number there. I'm sorry. I don't know it and I will <laughs> never. <laughs> yes. The listeners story this one was sent by dre via instagram and here it goes hey booze ghost emoji i have a short scary story to share so like 11 years ago in 2012 my boyfriend now husband congrats congrats yes my boyfriend now husband and i used to take day to night drives into angeles crest forest here in california we are big on stargazing and always looking for ufos and the unknown i remember one night we drove up there and i don't remember exactly why but we started arguing (laughs) I then wanted to go home, so we started driving back to the city. I get motion sickness, so I remember we pulled into this empty lot so I could calm down. The forest has a lot of stops, so it's hella secluded. And if you've ever been in the forest at night, you know it's pitch black unless there's a full moon. So we pull over and we continue arguing when all of a sudden my hubby says his chest hurts and he starts grabbing it. He's saying he can't breathe. Ooh, that's not good. He can't breathe and it hurts. And I'm like, this fool. She thought he was making it up. (laughs) I tell him to stop fucking around and lying. He's like, doubled over. (laughs) He he doubled over. She's like, bitch, stop. (laughs) All of a sudden you want to get a heart attack. (laughs) When it's convenient for you, you want to (laughs) die in the middle of this argument that we haven't resolved. Okay. No. (laughs) He tells me I'm not. I think I'm having a heart attack. Then all of a sudden, we start feeling the car sway and rock. Mind you, we're still inside the car with the car running and our headlights on. At first, we think, oh shit, there's an earthquake. But then we see this black cape thing circling the car. What the fuck? The best way I can describe it, it was like a ghost or death from the movie The Frighteners. I don't know that movie. I'm picturing a Dementor. That's what I'm picturing too. She then says, if you haven't seen it, I suggest it. It's a good end of 90s film. So we freak the fuck out and book it down the hill and get to the city slash civilization. Once we're out of the forest, my hubby started feeling better and we didn't go back for a good month or two. Till this day, when we drive by that lot, we always get shivers and wonder what the fuck we saw that night. Shock emoji. I mean, wow, that's scary. Yeah. Yes. We've had a bunch of spooky, weird, unexplained events happen to us. And right now we have found ourselves dealing with our son seeing my dad. Oh, I just lost my dad last year in May 2022. So sorry for your loss. Now our son is telling us he sees old papa, which is what he called my dad, and stuff about my dad and his passing that he shouldn't know. He's only seven and it creeps me the fuck out. But in a sweet way? (laughs) I would be like, that's cute, but I would also be terrified. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she could just be like, dad, I love you. I'm glad you want to see my son still, but it is a little scary for me and maybe it'll stop. I think so. I think so. I think with loved ones, that would 100% work. Yeah. Thank you for your time. I can't wait for a new episode. You guys make me feel like I know you in real life and have me laughing like a damn donkey hy- slash hyena. <laughs> Not to mention, I'm always scared as fuck sleeping with the lights on and forcing my cats to lay in bed with me. Much love, support, and spooky vibes, and a lot of heart emojis and a pumpkin emoji. <laughs> Thank you for your story. And again, sorry for your loss. But also, I think you're right, Carmen. I think when you tell the ghost of all loved ones, like, hey, I'm scared. Like, I love you, but I'm... I'm a spooked. I think they'll leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll accept the spooky vibes, but like only like pretend spooky vibes, not real spooky vibes. No, not real spooky vibes. Just cute a spooky vibes. Like, I don't know what a cute a spooky vibe is, but I'll take that one. Like, I'll listen to your scary stories, but I want no part in them. Yes. I, yeah, I don't want to see anything. Um, because I would die, and literally, like that would be the end of me. I'm not kidding when I say me cago y me muero. That's exactly what I would do. Like, if I saw something for real, 
Okay, but make sure you wear cute underwear. Yeah, that's what we said last episode. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again for the story. Again, if you want to send in a story, email it or DM us. That's fine. Either one. So on to today's topic. Uh, the, I forgot the name already. Something, something. The Brazil Superior Universal Alignment Cult. Alignment. Alignment Cult. Yeah, yeah. And it's not your everyday regular cult. There's ties here to aliens, Satanism, dark magic. Uh, maybe it is your average I was about then. to say <laughs> no it sounds about right <laughs> yeah you're right because Heaven's Gate did involve aliens I was watching a Fundy Friday's video recently about man what was it called something love oh the is it the love has one cult yes yeah and that was also some alien stuff yeah you're right this is your everyday cult yeah okay so <laughs> Superior Universal Alignment. It began in 1981, and the leader of the cult is Valentina de Andrade. So, a woman leader. Andrade. That last name is cursed. <laughs> Do we know any good people with the last name Andrade? I don't know. I know two Andrades right now. <laughs> Sergio Andrade. And this one. <laughs> yeah, so not good for the Andrades. If you're a good Andrade, let us know. No. <laughs> that way we know they exist yeah yeah <laughs> so um yeah that was her name she was born in caracinho brazil and there's not much about her early life at least not that is public she was a preacher red flag yeah think that being a preacher at some point is a prerequisite a red flag and a prerequisite to being a cult leader that's why i couldn't be a cult leader i can't preach <laughs> could you be a cult leader uh no i i don't think i could be because i just don't i don't have that much charisma or riz as the youth say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see you're using the word now. Uh, yeah, I don't have leadership skills. I don't want them. I remember when I was in the army, they'd be like, you need to be a leader. And I'm like, I actually am a follower. <laughs> you know, I think I, I could be if I wanted. I could. But it's tiring. It's tiring to be. And I say that because I'm sort of in a leadership position right now because I have an intern and it's exhausting. <laughs> it really is. Whenever I have to train people at work, I'm like, ooh. Hmm. what do i even say what do i do I'm and then i get tired, tired. <laughs> yes it's just tired like i don't think i could be a, a cult leader I, and yeah so i'm a follower i couldn't be a cult leader yeah but uh, valentina de andrade here she is a cult leader so <laughs> not much is known about her early life she has a memoir or book where, or a biography on her website i'm not sure all three did she just, write it i don't know where this came from yeah she wrote her own biography as well on her website so um she mentions in her biography that she she's illiterate that she could read if she wanted to but it, it would like not go with her spiritualness like it would ruin the connection she has with the spiritualness okay that's why she doesn't choose to read but she could if she wanted to that's on her biography okay um, i guess yes a little weird to say yeah to me, this kind of shows that she is from maybe a disadvantaged background. She also mentions that uh, she never owned any toys when she was young. They had no money for bicycles, toys, no money. So I'm like, yeah, that fits then. Yeah. And she also mentions in her biography that she is a romantic, a loyal extrovert, and that she has never done anything to disturb her conscience and she's never done anything evil. Hmm. Yeah, uh, a little weird to say in a biography, right? Like, I'm Christina and I don't do anything evil. <laughs> okay, it's like people that all the time they keep saying they're a good person over and over again. And it's like, if you had to say it that much, then it's probably not true. Like, hey, hey, I'm a good guy. Okay, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what she's giving me. She's giving me nice guy vibes. Um, because if you have to announce that you are not evil, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> If you're if you're a cult leader, that kind of means that you did some bad stuff, right? Because you had to control people <laughs> and manipulate them into your cult. <laughs> and you liked it. Not only were you evil, but you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in her own biography, in her own words, she's, she's not evil. Okay. She's never done anything evil. At 21, she had a spiritual awakening. She claims that she was contacted by aliens that warned her about the end of the world. And that if she spread word about this end of world date, uh, she and her followers would be saved from doomsday by the aliens. They would come up in a ship and save them, which gave me Heaven's Gate vibes. Yeah. And uh, aliens also told her that Jesus Christ is an alien. He's not he's not the son of God. He's an alien. OK. Which kind of made me think of Raptor Jesus. Raptor Jesus? 
Yeah, have you seen those images? People just like draw Jesus out as a raptor. I think I have. Yeah, I'm sure you have. She claims she has proof of this, but she hasn't shown anyone this proof. This is all in her book. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But also, she was very welcoming to all in her preaching um, in her church. Okay, like that one guy. Yes, this actually gave me Jim Jones vibes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yes. So she was especially welcoming to the LGBTQIA peeps, the folks, the gays and theys. She was very nice to them at a time when no one else was because Um, again these are the 80s Mm -hmm. not a good time for people Um, I think we're like in full-fledged satanic panic mode I think we're in like full-fledged homophobia HIV crisis yeah so people were not welcoming I mean like even today people are very very still and set in their ways but back then worse so she was welcoming to everyone when no one else was she said that the aliens told her like hey love has no rules when you love someone you love them it doesn't matter who they are in that sense the aliens are right (laughs) yeah so (laughs) I can't believe I agree with her or something (laughs) Yeah, the one thing, because there's a little bit much out there that I'm like, never mind. But this one thing we can't agree on, yeah. So she she would tell, like, in her preaching, like, you know, parents, you need to love your children, even if they're this or that. Accept everyone, accept all. And yeah, Valentina de Andrade, you're right. You're right about that. So this is how she grew her following. Um, She would preach these things, even the weird parts. <laughs> the aliens and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Doomsday. Oh, yeah. Jesus right. Christ is an alien. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. She would preach all that, but also she was welcoming. She also said she had clairvoyant powers. So she could tell the future and people believed her. People went to her in her little town for readings and stuff like that. And she also published a book on her beliefs. This book was called God, the Great Scam. And uh, this uh, it grew her popularity even more somehow. I don't know. Hmm. In the book, she laid down all these beliefs, this stuff about aliens, this stuff about doomsday. But she also said, and this is a quote from her book, watch out for children. They are unconscious instruments of the great scam called God and his evil collaborators. Don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like kids can be a little mean, but I don't think they're evil collaborators. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't think they're the embodiment of evil. Yeah. (laughs) That's a belief in fundamental Christian. It is, also, isn't it? Yeah, that children are like inherently evil. That's why you need to train it out of them or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think children are inherently good. Honestly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the opposite here but i think it's easy especially in this time frame uh the, the years we're in in a religious country where maybe people are questioning things where maybe there's people looking for more i think it's easy to take bits and pieces of christianity and then like make them worse than they already are <laughs> <laughs> so like oh this is evil as if it wasn't bad already <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and that's what she did like we've said before i do think anyone could fall into being a cult oh yeah fall into a cult i mean like it doesn't take you to be i don't know dumb or anybody could fall especially someone in a vulnerable stage yeah if you're already not accepted somewhere and you find this one place that doesn't accept you and yeah maybe they're a little weird at first maybe you're like well that's that doesn't check out but you start listening to maybe one part and then maybe the rest of it is like a little more believable bit by bit so yeah she grew her following this was the beginning of the cult 1981 but this is when things kind of started getting a little darker (laughs) darker so again she believed children were uh, evil Uh, i'm scared yeah she believed all children born after 1981 were the reincarnation of evil any child born after 1981 would not be saved by her spaceship aliens because they were evil and so if anyone was a member for cult and they had a child after 1981 they had to give it away whatever it didn't matter to her but they could not be in the cult because they had these children born after 1981 so this kind of sets like anyone after 1981 no evil she never told her followers when doomsday would happen exactly when of course because she needed to keep changing the the goalpost as manipulative people do exactly again reminds me of heaven's gate yeah 
but yeah so she she kept that date to herself she made her believers to believe she was like the almighty savior she's the one who could connect with these aliens who would then save them only her therefore she's the savior oh yeah only her she started telling her followers to rid themselves of negative energy this meant they had to do away with their male sons because she considered them to be the most evil beings on earth (laughs) what about adult men they're fully out here on the (laughs) earth and you're over here blaming the children (laughs) yeah that was my thought too (laughs) (laughs) so because she refused to share the date of the end of the world her believers they started feeling like they were the ones not doing enough and that's why that doomsday wasn't happening that's why the group hadn't been picked up yet by the spaceship because there was still too much negative energy in the world and the group had to purge the world no! of more evil and again little boys were the embodiment embody oh my god i can't say that word embodiment 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 yeah yeah of all evil so this is when boys started disappearing in altamira brazil this is like 1989 time frame is when boys started disappearing but it's also coincides with her telling her cult this coincidence i don't know i don't think so i think they're related <laughs> So boys in Altamira from ages 8 to 13 started to disappear. In between those years, 89 to 93, 19 boys were reported missing. And of course, I think every time we think that there's, or every time we think about the boys that are reported missing, there's some that were not ever reported. Mm -hmm. Especially because a lot of these boys were from poor families or were just unhoused they didn't have families so then you have to think there has to be more victims yeah at least i do that's where my brain goes these disappearances they were never solved but they were connected to the superior universal alignment cult if only like very uh loosely connected because nothing nothing was ever like confirmed no evidence was tied to them or anything like that yes So in 1997, when Valentina told her followers that the spaceship never came because her followers weren't loyal enough, there was still too much negative energy, still too much evil, and still too many evil children, boys started going missing. Like, that's strange. (laughs) The boys fit the timeline of having been born after 1981 which she also said all children born after 1981 are evil Uh, like it fits it fits the bodies that were found of these 19 children they all showed signs of sexual abuse oh my god and many were missing their genitals oh my god it's terrible it's truly horrifying the first victim was an eight-year-old boy mm. named Joseph. He disappeared August 2nd, 1989. He was found alive, but he was seriously injured and had been sexually abused. Oh my God. On November 16, 1989, 10-year-old Otoniel went missing. He was working at the time. He was delivering mangoes to a man in Altamira. During the delivery of the mangoes, the man pulled Otoniel into an isolated area, placed a cloth over his mouth and nose, and the cloth had a weird scent to it. Otoniel fainted. When he woke up, he was in pain and there was blood everywhere. No. Turns out Otoniel had been raped and castrated oh my god this is horrible uh it's horrible he was rushed to the hospital he underwent surgery but he never recovered unfortunately oh my god and then in july 1990 the 23rd of july nine-year-old waldi clay so he was at the edge of town when a stranger approached him the man asked waldi clay for his help getting a kite off a tree it was stuck in the tree and you know the man said he needed his help then before he knew it there was a cloth over his face while the clay passed out he woke up later again like um, the other two boys bloody and in pain oh my God. he same thing had also been raped and castrated he was the third boy in the same exact condition so finally police started connecting the cases they were like well maybe there's a serial killer around and then like more cases just kept happening january 20th 1991 13 year old tito mendez went missing 
he was never found. He was last seen swimming at the Tres Pontes stream and an eyewitness saw him leaving with a man, but he was never found. A little bit later, May 5th, the fifth boy went missing. 10-year-old Alton Fonseca disappeared. He was found 46 days later, dead. He was taken to a local morgue, but his body disappeared before an autopsy could be completed. What the F? Which is now, it's like, now that's just suspicious. Now that just makes me think that there is someone that does autopsies involved or like a police officer or someone in government that can make a body disappear from a morgue because not everybody can just do that yeah right i don't know it's weird in august 1991 11 year old jcb went missing he was never found and then again, more more cases. Uh, January 1992, a 13-year-old Hurdile de Cunha, he uh, went missing. He uh, was seen with an unknown man and he was found later um, castrated, naked, cuts everywhere, burns everywhere. Oh my God. The cases didn't stop. I'm not going to go into every single one of them because they're all terrible. They're all equally terrible. But yeah, Ednaldo de Sousa, Jaime de Silva, Clepson, Ferreira... Mauricio Faras de Sousa, Renan Santos, Flavio Lopez de Silva, and then a 14th victim, just initials RFS, are the only ones known. They all went missing. Some of them were found with the same signs of torture, castration, bleeding everywhere. Some were never found. And they were all seen either with uh, one man or two. It was like the last that was seen of them all missing genitals uh very terrible terrible things and it's not known which of the boys escaped and then ran to the police for help i don't know which one but one of these 14 boys was alive and escaped and went to officers for help he told the officers that several people locked him up he accused the boy accused the son of a wealthy landowner a police officer two doctors and Valentina de Andrade. Wow. That's what he named, yeah. And even then, most of these cases were never fully investigated because either there was not enough evidence, there was no witnesses, there was... All the bodies were, like, they weren't alive. They couldn't say what happened until this boy. And of these 14, only half of them were actual open investigations. Through the boy's testimony, they, I don't know, I guess followed it and found one man named Rotilio de Sousa, who they uh, arrested for this. But then this man died in jail and the disappearances didn't stop. So it sounds like they just needed someone to blame. Yeah. And it was just this man. Like it became obvious it wasn't him because the disappearances continued. Police then came to a new conclusion. They were like, okay, these are doctors that are performing these castrations, which that is corroborated by what the boy said. He said there was two doctors. That's what he told police. Two doctors, a police officer, the son of a wealthy landowner, and then Valentina de Andrade. So the police were like, all right, well, it's these two doctors and they were like these doctors are luring the boys to cut out their organs and sell it on the black market that's what they concluded they said the doctors were anicio ferreira de susa and ceslo brandao these two men doctors had just moved to altamira in 1990 they were arrested they were questioned but then they were cleared um, because an expert determined that the doctors had no way to transport organs uh, to sell but it's like they could have still been the doctors and also <laughs> maybe they weren't selling them like yeah exactly doesn't i mean it could have been maybe not that much evidence but they would just say that i guess uh so it's weird to be like no it can't be them because they don't have anything to transport yeah but it's like who's to say they were selling these organs i mean yeah it it doesn't make sense but that's what they said and so the two doctors were released so because of the boy statements the police did raid valentina's home because you know he named her too so then at her home they found these strange robes that looked like they were used for like a ritual and they were like immediately like oh this is satanic or black magic because the robe is weird <laughs> i don't know what the robe looked like but maybe it was but they also found weird videos that appeared to be satanic in nature is what they said so they first stated in their report that the, in the video Valentina is clearly entering a trance and she says kill little children in the video what the fuck yeah but then this was dismissed because the audio is like not discernible it's not clear she really could have said there's no little children experienced is also what it sounded like like they they just can't tell what she was saying so that was dismissed there was just not enough evidence to know what was happening what was going on eventually prosecutors brought seven indictments 
in front of the court on September 6, 1993. And these indictments were accepted. The, they were like, all right, let's move on with this. So one eyewitness claimed that she attended a cult meeting at a doctor's house in 1991. Those two doctors that had been arrested and then let go, um, one of their house is where they saw, they said there was a ritual. And then another person said that the one of the doctors, De Sousa, had been praying to Satan. I don't know how well that can be trusted because like any time there's like a high profile case like this and anyone's blaming satan i'm a little like i don't know about that yeah yeah plus they were talking about god in the earlier seasons of the cult or whatever so yeah but they said god was evil that's true you're right yeah or a scam yeah so i don't know i don't know but they didn't believe i mean to me it's not a satanic cult because they're like all about aliens yeah so i don't know i don't know about that but that's what they said there was another man, Ama Ilton Madeira Gomez. He uh, was an openly gay man. He was the heir to several gas stations and farms. He was indicted when these seven charges that were brought. Police claimed he was the person who lured the boys and raped them. I witnessed to say they saw him wearing a blood-stained sweater after one of the disappearances. To me, though, again, anytime a gay man is accused... Yeah, it's a little questionable because there's that stigma that supposedly gay men are pedophiles when we know... When in reality... That- <laughs> fact <laughs> most child molesters and abusers sexual abusers whatever are straight men yeah yeah so i don't know that i believe this personally so then another person that was charged uh carlos alberto santos lima he worked as a military security guard at the same gas station that belonged to the gomez family so amailton madeira gomez he worked at that one of those gas stations Police questioned him and they said he confessed to being part of a criminal cult. Aldenor Ferreira Cardoso also worked at a secu- as a security guard and he was said to provide security for the cult. Jose Amedeos Gomez, he is a Milton's dad. He was accused of being the mastermind behind all the killings and police suggested that he did everything for financial gain. How? Houseway, how? <laughs> exactly. What financial gain is there in... in- killing and i guess if you look at the angle of the black the black market of selling the organs but then they also said that they didn't have a way to transport the organs exactly nothing adds up nothing adds up valentina de andrade was also charged in these seven indictments she was charged as the uh, cult leader and intellectual leader of the killer cult and jose and valentina were allowed to remain free until the start of the trials during the trial autopsies and forensic testing was not performed um, on any of the boys prosecutors thought that they would be able to reach a guilty verdict just through the use of eyewitness accounts which is always like a little iffy yeah because eyewitness accounts can be so unreliable Mm -hmm. plus i think sometimes people just lie sometimes they do they see what they want to see yeah especially when accusing a gay man yeah because i I refuse to believe that like obviously there is like people all people do wrong but whenever it involves killings like this violating children like this abuse like this i'm like it's like highly sensationalized and we know how, how the satanic panic turned out here like all of it turned out to be false right exactly exactly so of course it turned a lot of things are going to be false in other places yeah so i mean there was little evidence um and then they still had to be like decide what to use in the trial as evidence valentina de andrade's former husband he owned a hotel in altamira he testified but he it didn't like offer much he testified that in 1986 valentina Seem to have heavy influence on her friends and they would cling on every word, meaning he was testifying that she was a cult leader. Okay. A maid that worked for one of those two doctors claimed she had seen the cult's rituals and she was supposed to testify, but then she mysteriously died. Okay, that's a that's a little questionable. <laughs> That is a little questionable. Yeah, that's not a good look. <laughs> no. And then uh, all of the accused, they were like, no, this isn't a cult. Uh, there's no rituals. We never kidnapped anyone. None of the accused ever turned on Valentina. None of them ever said she was a cult leader. The most they accused her of was that she told them to hand over children to others so they wouldn't take care of them. But that's weird, too, because why would you listen to so that that 
alone shows how much control she had. Yeah, exactly. So by 1994, it was obvious there was a lack of evidence. The chief prosecutor wanted to dismiss the case, but the assistant prosecutor insisted that they not drop the charges. So they brought eyewitness Edmilson de Silva Frasao. I just love these names. (laughs) To the stand. Ed Milson testified that he attended a satanic cult meeting at one of the doctor's house in 1989 or 1990. He couldn't remember which year. Oh, sorry. How much time did you say have, has passed? Five years or so, because this was 1994. Okay. And he said it was 89 or 90. I mean, it's so much time. It's. <laughs> I mean, like I can remember what I had for lunch like yesterday. So I have a horrible memory. <laughs> I almost feel like when someone doesn't remember the exact date, it's more true than when they remember an exact date. I don't know. That's just me. Hmm. Like if if I were like, oh, yeah, on December 3rd, 2000, at Carmen 3 slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at 3 p.m., Carmen slapped me in the car and then she got in a car accident and she ran someone over and like... <laughs> Yeah. It's too specific. It's too specific. So the fact he doesn't remember which year, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe okay. maybe there's some truth I see to what it. You're saying. To yeah. Me. Yeah. Cause it's like some memories are so strong or some things are so impactful that but everyone's memory is so different, it's impossible. It's yeah. yeah. It's true. It's that's why it's so unreliable. Yep. That's why we need the forensics. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching bones. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) yes, that was 1980 or 90 that he said he saw Valentina there. um, But his statement was determined not trustworthy uh, because. Okay. When he first questioned police, he said he attended the meeting in 91. Then at court, he said that it was another year. Um, So it was really dismissed. But in June 20th, 1994, the judge pronounced all seven accused guilty. Based on even what? On this li- <laughs> even on this very on little vibes. evidence. <laughs> yeah, on vibes, he said. He said, I don't know. You seem guilty. Uh. Guilty. Yes. <laughs> so um, the defense team then filed an appeal and the prosecutor's office accepted it because they truly believed that there was a lack of evidence. Locals protested the appeal. Uh, the chief prosecutor, this scared him. He ran away from Altamira in 1994, December 1994. Then there was like a public outcry. Judges decided to keep suspects in custody and continue the investigation. I mean, how much more can be uncovered? It's been... <laughs> So, so much time has passed now. Yeah. And, you know, what they did have, the little they had, the ceremony videos, uh, satanic publications that they found at Valentina's home, it wasn't enough evidence. So two victims identified one of the security guards and that he had lured them in. But prosecutors uh, were determined to pin the murders on the entire cult, not just that security guard. Even though the security guard alone could be identified by one, two of the victims, two of the survivors. So honestly, they really probably should have like... just went with him yeah that's what i would think but they wanted to bring the whole cult down so the last attempt at convictions it was in the 2000s um brazilian prosecutors tried to prosecute valentina and four other cult members but in 2003 they acquitted valentina of mutilation and killing of the boys and it was a 17-day trial headlines read valentina de andrade is acquitted of the charges she was 72 at this point oh wow she apparently fainted after hearing her judgment the prosecution wanted to appeal the court's decision. Defense lawyer Arnaldo Busto Filo, Filho? Filo presented court documents showing that Valentina was not in Altamira when a lot of the crimes were committed. Well, she didn't have to be. She's the cult leader. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, that doesn't mean she anything. She calls the shots. <laughs> She's not doing yeah. the dirty work. That's not what you think it means. <laughs> They um, also presented more evidence like that the guns in the home were not like meant to, they were not cult related. Their evidence was like that Valentina had given her husband a gun as a gift and like there's a video of it and in the video you can hear her saying that it has bullets of gold to kill little vampires. What the fuck? But you know what? Why did she say little vampires? That sounds like she's talking it's about code for me. children. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she calls them. <laughs> yeah, because she could have just said it has bullets t- to kill vampires, but no. 
That's not what she said. Little vampires. It's strange. It's a strange coincidence. She was talking about Bella's baby. Bella's baby. Renesme. It's just so disturbing how Jacob imprinted on the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I was team Jacob until that moment. No, I didn't even get that far in the books or the movies. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I didn't find out, out about through that. Through TikTok um, a year ago. <laughs> I found out longer ago, but I mean, from the movie, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I never read the books, but when I watched the first movie, I was Team Jacob. <laughs> me too. Me too. Um, So four other defendants had already been sentenced in the case. They were sentenced either 35 to 77 years is what they received, including the two doctors and one of the security guards, I want to say, or both of them. Oh, probably both of the security guards. And that's because Otoniel and Wandy Clay testified that those were the doctors they had seen. In Otoniel's testimony, the judge called the defendants and Otoniel did recognize the security guard. And the, uh, okay, so yeah, it was him. And in his testimony, he said, I am sure convinced 100% that is Carlos Alberto. So he is the one who placed one of the security guards there. Okay. The defense tried to disqualify the testimonies, claiming that the two victims had um, identified other people as aggressors, that other people had been guilty. Then they stated that the reason they were pointing out Carlos Alberto right now is because at the time the kids were afraid of pointing out the real culprit. They were scared of being killed. But uh, Otoniel said, in the past I was a scared child. Today I'm a man. I own my actions. I'm no longer afraid. Um, so he was sure of his like testimony. So it was compelling enough for people to like be moved by that to actually sentence or whatever. Unless it wasn't a jury. I don't know. I'm assuming. <laughs> But I don't, I don't know, know how their how their legal system yeah. works. It might just be a judge. It could be, yeah. So the four, the two doctors and the security guards, uh, were trying to appeal their uh, sentences. It's still not sure who did like most of the killing because there was they they were tried and found guilty for the two boys that survived, Otoniel and the other boy. Okay, and then there was all those other boys. Yeah, yeah. So like the cult is still around today. Really. Yeah, you can still go to their website and on their website, they're like, we never committed any kidnapping or murders. Like, which, of course you would say that. You're not going to admit it. But but they say there it wasn't them. Okay, because she and Valentina and her sermons or beliefs, whatever, she outright said children are evil and all this stuff. Right. So how do you explain that then? Like, there's still a tie there. And it's like still horrible to be spouting all that shit anyway. So like, even if you didn't do these things. Maybe the words you said manipulated people into. And like, what do you have to say about that? You know? Exactly. Yeah. And do they still believe that? Or do you know? Like, uh, you know, I don't know if they've updated their like little doctrine. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So in there's other theories about who was behind all these killings. In 2004, police uncovered uh, that there was a serial killer going around in the same time in Brazil. Francisco das Chagas Rodriguez de Brito. There was a young boy who was murdered, Jonathan Santos. Uh, police found his body and um, they were able to connect Francisco to it. He was a bike mechanic and Jonathan. Jonathan Santos said he was going to go see Francisco, the bike mechanic, before he disappeared. So he was on his way to see him and then he was never seen again. And then further investigations led police to connect Francisco um, to 42 other boys who were found raped. Wow. Oh my God. That's a lot. Yuck. 42. It is a lot. And all of these boys were also found raped with their genitals missing. Oh my God. And it was in all over Brazil, including the state of Para, which is where Altamira is, okay. where the murders, all these murders took place. I mean, that's the same like mo i guess yes yes and because uh santos's murder was very similar to the murders in altamira officials believe now that it was francisco das chagas who was doing this who killed all these boys but that does not explain the boys that survived and placed the two doctors and the security guards at who identified them yeah like it doesn't explain that so i maybe it was both of them maybe it could be the group was only in charge or the group only committed some of them and the serial killer did the rest i don't know they're not solved to this day there's no confirmation just terrible yeah that's horrible 
But if I mean, if 42 murders were connected to this serial killer, um, what's another 19 to him? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's just, I think at the end of all of this, after you hear it, there's more questions than answers. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, because only four four members of the cult were charged. And in the end, where does that leave the other three that were charged, including Valentina? Because it also fits. It also fits, like you said. She she said all boys were evil, born after 1981. So she's still, I mean, horrible. She can't excuse herself of anything. Like, she's out here saying some hateful shit, spewing hatred towards the most vulnerable population out there, children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we still don't like her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and unlike her biography says, she is actually evil. I was going to say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to her own belief, yes, she is indeed evil. <laughs> yes, we have determined. <laughs> but yeah, that was the superior alignment cult. Did I say that right? Mm, I think there's like some words missing. <laughs> My bad. Superior universal alignment cult. There was a word missing. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, very depressing. I'm sorry. I don't know what is going on here. Um, you know what? I know it's because I really like cults and Dawn is also a fan of cults. And she's like, hey, what do you think of this cult? You want to cover it? And I'm like, yeah, more cults. <laughs> so we do have actually more cults coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, cults are very uh, spooky. So <laughs> cults are. Yeah. And like, I mean, yeah, ghosts and the paranormal scary. But I often find that true crime cases are far more disturbing and scary yeah yeah because they actually happened yeah i mean you know ghosts and the spiritual whatever not everyone has the same belief but when it comes to like true crime like that legitimately like happened you know so yeah as our father says (laughs) be scared of or fear the living more than the dead or something something like that Mm -hmm. yeah and he's right (laughs) but yeah that brings us to the end of the episode. Thanks for uh, being here, Carmen. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to plug before we go? Uh, you know I do. Oh, wait. What am I doing? Do you have any spooky recommendations? Oh, so, I mean, I haven't finished it, but I started watching a documentary series. Damn, what is it called? It's on Hulu. It's a... Oh, I was telling you about it. It's uh, about... I don't remember this. It was like the other day. I was telling you about it. It's uh, about the Lebron cult mormon oh we're gonna cover this cult oh okay okay yeah so take notes <laughs> <laughs> i learned about this cult when i was watching under the banner of heaven well they don't talk about it in the show but the show is based on the book which i think i recommended one when, when i first read it and i whenever that was it was a while ago yeah um it was. so yeah i recommend the show and the book and the book goes way more into detail about um the history of uh, like Mormon and uh, fundamental Mormon cults and uh, the Lebron family is one that they talk about. And uh, yeah, these are like, and like, as I think, I don't know, most of us, especially if you're, you follow cults and fundamental Mormons and whatever, we know that uh, Mormons, mainstream Mormons, like separated from like fundamental Mormons went, sorry, my dog's pushing me (laughs) behind me. There he is. Milo. And he's turning around. <laughs> I saw him. Um, and he just doesn't care about my personal space. But anyway, they split when um, the United States outlawed polygamy. And so a lot of them fled to Mexico after that. And that's where the Lebron cult is based in Mexico. I want to say it was near Chihuahua and the town that they're in, the remote town that they were in. I don't know if they're still around because this whatever. Anyway, it's called Colonia Lebaron. Oh my God. What is up with... um? that just made me think of colonia dignidad another cult in latin america yeah yeah um brought on by white people all the horrible things in latin america <laughs> interesting connection hmm. and to... if you want to learn more about <laughs> well this brings us to our next thing carmen do you have anything to plug <laughs> wait do you have any spooky recommendations or you're still watching bones right no i don't i'm on season 10 episode 15 of bones now well, how many seasons are uh, there? that is my update i think I think there's 12 or 13. I'm closing in on the end. Okay. I do want to say that I thought Sweets died sooner in season five and it's season season 10. Oh, no. Yeah. I remember so it was a in while. The show much longer. Well, yeah, I was like, I stopped watching after they did whatever they did to Sweets. But no, I stopped watching in season five. I never watched past season five. Oh, huh. Yeah. When all the Palant, like that Palant. Oh, I think I'm pretty sure I watched past that because I do remember when he. Well, yeah, I think you're the one who told me about sweets. Oh, you know what? We were watching it when you left for the military thing. That's why you didn't keep watching it. 
yeah and every time i rewatch it i just watched up to season five so i now i'm committed what is it i on have again? to finish it on netflix hulu oh hulu okay hulu yeah i might i might yeah now i have to finish also. it you should uh there's a lot of episodes <laughs> yeah too much and it's why i haven't been watching anything scary i don't like it but i i also like it it doesn't make sense <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Oh, I didn't do it last episode, but I will be sending out our book club questions because we were we should do that. Oh, I was about to ask about that. I love her books because she sends out a question like a book club kit. Oh, that's a, really? Available online. Yeah. And so that's where I'm going to pull the questions from. Cool. Yeah. She even does like a little cocktail you can serve if you're doing. Oh, like I a have meeting. seen that. Should we uh, should we do it? Should we each make our own little cocktails? Yes. We discuss it. Okay, I'll also send that out too then. I really hope so MJ anyone, can join us. Yeah. Oh, wait, she didn't even finish it. <laughs> Did she? No, you're right. She <laughs> said for us to record it without her because she's too busy. But maybe it's been so long that maybe. I'll ask her again. Fingers but crossed. Sure. She's too busy. Yeah. I hope, I hope. Oh, yeah. Anything to plug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you're into Latin American, hi- sorry, Latin American history, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, learning about, talking about, I don't know, colonialism, uh, stories of power, stories of resistance, talking shit about the United States and the horrible things they've done in Latin America, then check out Historias Unknown. And then we also have Novelas con Cafecito, where we're rewatching Teresa. Yeah, I'm not going to say novelas because it's <laughs> it's just Teresa. We're rewatching now, yeah. Teresa, recapping each episode, talking shit as we go. And we introduce a new segment, Chronically Online con Cafecito, where we talk about internet chisme and that's gonna be its own podcast once we finish teresa and we're nearing the end we are nearing the end and it's a lot of fun um yeah and so yeah both of those will be linked in the show notes and um i don't know i don't have anything witty um don't kill children <laughs> oh yes thank you don't kill children stay a spooky we'll catch they're everyone not evil. next time <laughs> they're not evil uh especially the ones born after 1981 <laughs> Especially those. (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, Stay spooky. We'll catch everyone next time. Bye. Bye.